this video a like, comment on it, or just subscribe. It like allows my channel and my videos to be seen by so many more people. I have a contact that's like messing up. I've been filming for a couple of hours and I'm just like, my contacts are done. <laughs> they want to be taken out now, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started with today's case. This is an unsolved case um, that I actually read about probably a couple of years ago or I heard a podcast on it and it just, like, it just stuck with me. Um, I know I say that like every single video, but um, this is an unsolved kidnapping case. So, um, our story tonight takes us to Arkansas, where Morgan Chantel Nick was born on September 12th, 1988. Now, let me just say that I was born on September 15th. 1998 or 1988 so it just like hits me more like she should be my age like doing the things that I'm doing and all that so okay so she was born September 12th 1988 to parents Colleen and John Nick in Ozark Arkansas Morgan was a vivacious child like she loved to make everybody laugh she even told several people she wanted to be a circus entertainer, which is funny, but, um, she was known to have, like, this wild imagination that people just loved about her. It drew people to her. She could make anybody laugh, and she really had this, like, bright, endless future in front of her. However, on one warm summer night in June of 1995, that would change. So it was June 9th and Morgan's mother, Colleen, decided that she wanted to take Morgan on a little day date, um, just the two of them to spend some time together. So she asked her mother to watch her other two children. Morgan had a little brother and a little sister. And um, she asked if she would watch them, and, and she agreed so that Morgan and Colleen could spend some time together. So that afternoon, they made the 30-minute drive to Alma, Arkansas. They had plans um, to meet up with some friends at a local park where they were going to go and um, watch a Little League World Series game. Morgan and her friends were having an amazing time at the game, um, but as the night grew on, they grew restless of sitting there. I mean, these girls were like seven, eight years old. So around 10.30, Morgan asked her mom, Colleen, if she could go to a like field that was nearby the seating and catch lightning bugs with her friends. The field was only about 75 yards from where Colleen was sitting. So, um, even though she was like reluctant because it was dark and it was late, she ended up letting her go, um, play with her friends. So every few minutes she would glance over and check on Morgan. Um, and she was easy to spot because she had on this like neon green Girl Scouts t-shirt, which I'm like a hundred percent positive that I had the same shirt when I was in Girl Scouts. Um, and some white tennis shoes. So she was easy, like with the lights from the parking lot made it easy with those colors on for her mom to see her. So about 15 minutes later, around 1045, the game ends and everybody just sort of backs up and like heads to their cars. Like, you know how it is at the end of an event, like everyone is trying to avoid traffic and, and all of that. So it got like really busy in that field and in the parking lot. Morgan's two friends who were named Jessica and Ty run back to 
Colleen and Colleen's like, well, you know, where's, where's Morgan? And, um, the friends say that she was sitting next to the car in the parking lot dumping sand out of her shoes and that she was waiting for, um, her mother there. So Colleen like rushes over to the car she gets there, Morgan's not there, and like as a parent, I can just imagine like what she was thinking in that moment. So she immediately runs over like to the first official person she sees, which happened to be the baseball coach, and tells him that her daughter has like gone missing and she can't find her. The baseball coach like calls police, but then he also starts talking to Jessica and Ty and asking them like if they noticed anything or what they were doing or whatever. So this is what they tell him. They say that while they were playing in the field, there had been a creepy man who had approached them and tried to talk to them, but none of the girls like wanted to have any part of it. They said that he was standing next to a faded red pickup truck that had a white camper shell attached to it. Several other people that had been at the game that night came forward and said that they had seen him and that it was a Caucasian male between the ages of 23 and 38 years old. Um, those who had heard him speak say that he had a very southern accent and that he was around six feet tall with salt and pepper beard. So the police had arrived in less than six minutes. This was taken very seriously and the area was closed off and searched, but Morgan or the mystery man were not found. Um, they immediately classified Morgan's case as an abduction and it sort of got statewide coverage and there was just sort of this like manhunt going on. Um, so when they started like getting the word out, a mother came forward and said that someone with the same description as the suspect in Morgan's case had tried to abduct her four-year-old earlier that, that same day, but she had noticed, like, something weird and had intervened. So Colleen, like, really was involved in her daughter's case. She actually moved into volunteer fire department in Alma and like refused to go home was passing out flyers every single day I again I just can't imagine what she felt in that time and what she still feels now so they worked with um, Jessica and Ty and all of the other people that had been at seen this man and they ended up making a composite sketch of him that was distributed to like news outlets all over the state of Arkansas. This led to police receiving over 4,000 tips um, and they checked into each and every one of them. They had like a unit or a team organized in Morgan's case at this point, um, but none of them led to Morgan or really any information about what may have happened to her. Colleen went home six weeks after Morgan was abducted and, you know, she had other children that she had to go take care of, but the other kids were like, go find Morgan, go, go bring her back home, which is like, breaks my heart. So 1995 goes by and it turns into 1996 and nothing is coming of Morgan's case. Colleen starts the Morgan Nick Foundation in Alma, um, which is a foundation that brings awareness 
about missing children and provides a support system and resources to those that are going through this tragedy, families of victims. And this foundation is actually still running today at the morgannickfoundation.com. Over the next several years, many tips came in and they just never led police anywhere. And then in 2001, um, six years after she initially went missing, they made a new composite sketch and included an age-progressed photo of Morgan and released this to the news outlets. And this created a lot of hype around Morgan's case. It even drew the attention of Unsolved Mysteries, who ended up doing a episode on her in August of 2001. Obviously, this gained the case national and even worldwide attention, and like again, just countless, countless tips were coming in, but they led to nothing. So shortly after the episode aired, they did get one tip from a man who claimed that Morgan's remains could be found on a property in Boonville, Arkansas. And so on January 15th, 2002, police went and conducted a search of the property, um, but they didn't find anything. Um, relating to Morgan's case. And then in 2010, so a full 15 years after Morgan was abducted, police got a tip from a narcotics officer who had done a bust and found an abandoned trailer on the property of a convicted child molester. Now this child molester had actually been on the radar of police in Morgan's case for years, and so they were very eager to get out and, like, search this area. They did. They searched for two days and found nothing. Like, imagine being her mother and, like, thinking, like, over and over, this is when we're gonna find my baby, and, like, nothing. Like, then two years later, on June 23rd, 2012, a woman named Tanya Renee Smith was arrested in Missouri. She had actually tried to purchase vital records and a birth certificate off um, the vital, vital check website in Morgan's name, so she was trying to assume her identity. She was charged and was found guilty of her crimes, but police couldn't link her to Morgan's disappearance. That was weird. Did you see these these lights? Move. Anyway. Um, it seemed like she was just somebody trying to capitalize and steal her identity. And then five years later, and this is really the last, like, big break and this was in 2017, so police receive a tip that back on that original property where they had searched the child molester's trailer, there was a well that they should search. That's kind of what the tip said. And so they go out in 2017 and search this well and the entire property again with cadaver dogs and again they get nothing so Morgan is still missing to this day it has been 26 years since Morgan went missing from that baseball game and her parents and her family and Morgan deserve justice. You can learn about the continued efforts to find Morgan on the morgannickfoundation.com. Her mother has never given up and like I would never give up if it were my child either. Um, 
somebody out there has got to know something. Somebody knows something and I just hope and I and I pray that one day Morgan can be laid to rest and get a proper burial and that her parents can receive closure and know what happened to her because the unknowing has got to be awful. So that is our story for today. I know it was a shorter story, but I still think that it was just so important to share with you guys. I thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in 